ready. Good evening. We'll call to order the regular monthly meeting of the City of Helotus Planning and Zoning Commission for October. It's October the 3rd at 7 p.m. I'd ask the Commission Secretary to call the roll, please. Greg Michelle. Here. Mike McLaughlin. Ron Hauser. Here. Richard Hawk. Here. Mario Reyes. Jeff Wade. Here. Jason Whiteman. Here. And we have Alex Blue from Council and Susan Darst from Staff. Susan, what is your official title? Assistant to the City Administrator. I forgot I was here. Huh? Oh. Joe Edmund. Oh, we don't want to forget Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Joe. Sorry, Sorry Joe. Joe. You weren't on the list the last time. <laughs> All right. We have uh, citizens to be heard, <laughs> which I have proceeded to I know, I know. put somewhere. <laughs> He was here last. Let's see what happens. Bear with me a second. Well, it's here somewhere. Uh, someone had signed up. Had someone signed up to speak? Yeah. You had. I'm sorry, I misplaced it. Um, did you want to speak now or about the issue on the agenda item? It's on the agenda. Are, are, let me rephrase that. Are you, are you representing somebody on the agenda? Uh, okay, so why don't we hold on to that? And maybe I'll find what I seem to have misplaced. It's not off to a good start here. Uh, we'll go to item four, which is discussion and action on the minutes from the last meeting, which was September the 5th. Should have found a copy in your packet. Uh, and I would open this up for uh, any edits or corrections or errors if you have found any. Uh, I would point out that I'm not sure it was on the uh, material that you have, but on page three under agenda item number eight, uh, starting about halfway down the page, there were two motions that uh, were put forward that failed. They're actually noted in here as motion to approve carried. Yeah. They've been changed in the official minutes to say motion to approve failed. So you didn't change the rules. We didn't change the rules. Oh. <laughs> So those two items that say carry, those were, the language was changed to fail, <coughs> so that you know, uh, before there was ultimately on page four where there was the approved item. So having said that, if there are other corrections or edits folks care to call to our attention, this would be the time to do so. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as permitted, except noting the two corrections made. Is there a, a second? I'll second. Okay, a uh, motion is to approve the minutes of September 5th with the language change from carried to failed on page three. All in favor, please signal aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is approved, or minutes are approved, excuse me. Item five tonight, discussion and action on a request by Pete Pompa for approval of a wayfinding sign to be located in a municipal right of way pursuant to Municipal Code of Ordinances Chapter 98, Section 72, that's zoning Old Town Hello to Special District subparagraphs G6B3, off-premises signs for Pete's Place Spirits and more located at 14743 Bandera Road. Um, I'd ask first off, is anybody representing the business here tonight? And Susan, I know that the that staff had prepared uh, some informational information on each of these items. Did you wish to speak to this one or any of them, or what's your? Not unless you have specific questions. Okay, great. And everybody should have been provided a copy. You all have it, right? Uh, of the information from city staff. So. This is item five. Uh, I will open it up to comments or questions that could be directed to city staff or among ourselves and then have a motion. I have a question. Go right ahead. Um, Jeff. <clears throat> it looks like uh, where this sign is going to be located going onto that private road. Um, 
Looks like there's also a few other businesses there. Wine 101, Ever So Sweet, Ease Peasy Creations. Is this going to be something to where it can be added to to include those other businesses, or are we going to have four or five different wayfinding sides along the road? This individual item I don't believe can be added onto, so it would be an individual wayfinding sign. Um, this is very close in proximity to an another wayfinding sign that lists those businesses that you spoke of. <clears throat> so they can't just be added to that? I don't believe that there's room on that current sign. That was the purpose for this additional. Okay. Ron, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> do we allow poll signs in Old Town? We do. For, for wayfinding. wayfinding. At least. And actually, I think we allow it for more than wayfinding. It could be creative. Uh, the issue I had, or the question I had, I mean, you raise a fair point. I mean, are we going to see six more of these? Um, but I think we have to take this one as it's presented as an individual business, one sign for one business that's being presented to us. Um, you know, staff might want to explore this with the developer of the property on what the plan is. I, I don't know how many, do you know, happen to know how many are on the other, the existing sign that's there? Yes. I don't know the exact number. I know that there are several, though. Yeah. I don't think those are actually entrance arrows. I think it just might be signs. Like a mo not a like monument sign, but, but mm -hmm. serving that same type of purpose. Yeah, exactly. Um. Uh, we don't have, there is an arrow on this one, right? There we go. Yeah. So it's not, uh, the only question I had is, would we wish to ask them to have an address on there? M normally, in, with our sign regulations, we do have addresses as a stipulation for part of the uh, uh, wording on the sign. I don't know if that's redundant here, since you have an arrow pointing where the business is, but <coughs> the way, yeah, the way the, the permits, you know, it's 14743 Old Bandera Road, building number nine their official address, so I don't know if that would. Well, there's certainly no space in what, what they presented here to put all that. Uh, and is it a two-sided sign? Uh, that I don't know. Is it noted? It's not illuminated, we know that. Because it looks like where it's located on Old Bandera Road, right at the corner there, that to me it'd be pretty pointless if it was one-sided. Mm. Well, my reading of the code, I believe, is that it would be permitted, and it doesn't need a uh, special approval to be two-sided, I don't believe. But if it were double-sided, would that double the amount of square footage? Uh, I don't think so. Not my expectation. But again, as wayfinding, you know, it's not the typical sign. So the fact that it's a pole sign, for example. It is quite large for a wayfinding sign, though. Four feet? Four by four? Is that what? Uh, well, you authorized 20 square feet, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, that's 20. So. Mm -hmm. It's four feet off the ground and four feet by four feet. Yeah. I guess my view is that I would rather see the uh, developer of this area come back with a not really a monument type, but a multi multi-business presentation um, for all of them. I don't really know if so much if you need an arrow if it's right next to that driveway because that's the only driveway there. Well, what others think about that? 
I mean, the concern I have is that we're presented here tonight with one business. One business has come forward with a sign. Right. And your point's well taken. You, you want to manage the number of signs, and yet there's no other businesses that have proposed this. So the burden would be on the future applicants, I would think. Well, and I think that there's, you know, plenty of more room back here for other businesses to rent and right. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. We did approve a large monument sign for this piece of property. Do we know if they ever built it? Well, I think that's the one that we're referencing in that there's a multi-tenant the multi-tenant sign that is there is that correct there is a multi-tenant sign that's very close to where this is proposed i apologize i don't know the history of when that was built do, do we um, have a, a google earth or a shot of it a ground shot of it while you're looking for that i was going to ask councilman blue if you have a recollection of this coming before council a multi-tenant Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There, there are multiple issues that, that I've wanted to bring up and not to sway the uh, commission on any of it. Um, you may recall that this is a particular piece of property where the owner and developer has proposed as many as 20 different buildings throughout the back side of the property. Many of those buildings do not have frontage on the road, and therefore people who are going there don't know it. All of them share the same address, which is the same problem that we've had with some of the other wayfinding signs that the buildings are in the back end of the property behind the front section, and you don't have any idea that they're there unless you actually see something that points in that direction. The previous signs were, uh, there were several of them. There are a couple of them that are specific to those businesses, um, and they really just have a name and then an arrow, and yes, they are pole signs. Pole signs are permitted in Old Town where they're not permitted in other zoning classifications. The, uh, yes, there was a couple years ago, maybe not even that long ago, 18 months ago, uh, permission granted both by PNZ and then by council to allow the developer to put a very large sign, kind of like a wall sign that runs along the road just behind the sidewalk mm -hmm. um, that would then have spaces for all of them behind there. Um, and so that has been approved. I'm not familiar with what, I think it's been started, but I don't know whether it's complete. Um, that's not where this sign would be. This sign is more on the right, if you're looking at the property, on the right-hand side, on the road, heading back so that when you can, it, it, the, the, the big sign really just says, somewhere on this property are all these businesses. But it doesn't specify where. It, it could be at the front, the back, et cetera. And you also did approve not long ago a sign for the wall of Pete's Place. And I think it was mentioned at that time that that, that sign is on the side of the building, which can't be seen from the road. But you can, you can see it from the, the dirt road that goes towards the back. And I think that's the goal of this is to have, um, is to have that where it shows you to go back behind the other buildings on that. Um, and if you look at the highlighted section on the back of the ordinance part, you'll see that um, the, the, it says under off-premise signs, on pr off-premise signs located in the right-of-way for way per wayfinding purposes only are permitted, uh, provided that the design of such signs is consistent with the concept set out for Old Town. Okay. The next one is pole-mounted or pole-mounted or free-sounding signs may be erected off-premise provided they are used only for area wayfinding. And to me, the first question then becomes when you have a large logo that's much larger than the arrow, is it only wayfinding or is it advertising? I don't know. Um, Pole-mounted and freestanding signs shall have a maximum of 20 square feet regardless of whether they're on or off-premise. So I don't know if, if that was highlighted by our, our staff for a particular reason to say that you know, I mean, but I, I think that we've been consistent in the city administrator saying that the logo is acceptable to be part of the wayfinding portion of it, not just a name and an arrow. So, but that's that's the history that I'm aware of, sir. Let me see what, what I have. Okay. It's this very is, dark. That's the property. It's the property here. See, but that's not the intersection in question. No. That is actually the back end. You can see that it's 
on the very top part. You can't see the intersection of dump. It's off page. There is a sign there, I believe, that says Pete's Place already. Enter here, and that's where their parking is at. Um, but that would be more up in this area. So this, this sign, and I don't even know if on that private, what's labeled a private road, I don't even know if you can drive on that or not. Yeah, I think it's pedestrian only, as I recall. Gravel yeah. pathway. So this is at the walking trail entrance. Do I get that right? Well, if you look at the placement of the, uh, the way the image is presented, it would suggest that, given where Wine 101 is. Yeah. And I believe um, the other sign is at the drive-in to the parking. Yeah. Like, in, like the councilman was saying, is that wall that was supposed to be signs for all the different right. businesses. Yeah. Yeah. Right, either to the right or the left of that pathway. I can't remember which way it was. That was the right place. Yeah, okay. I'm Let me really understand this. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Joe. Uh, what is wrong with this request? So the question is from Joe is what is wrong with the request? So according to code, mm -hmm. according to code, uh, there isn't anything wrong with it, right? So it is size-wise, it's acceptable. Mm -hmm. The question is, if there's already a sign for the business at this location, is it appropriate to have a second uh, sign for the same business at the same location? I understand that concern, but I'm, I'm not able to merge the two together, the request as it stands and Is there Fair point. Is so, so his point sorry. would be if this conforms to the sign regulations, does that end the story? Does that end the discussion? Or do we have some ability to exercise our oversight on whether or not it's appropriate to have right. two signs for the same business in the same place? If we do, it seems to me the customer should have been advised at the time we did the request. In this picture here, you can see the other sign. the two legs mm -hmm. but has the names of the other businesses or some of the businesses we just don't, know. Yeah. don't know which. Yes, but that's not the same location as where this one is being proposed no, I think this one's proposed right there that sidewalk right, right there right Any additional comments or discussion? If not, we can have a motion. Chairman? Yes, Joe. I'll offer a motion. Go ahead. I will move that the request by Pete Pumper for approval of a wayfinding sign to be located in Municipal Right of Way, pursuant to Municipal Code Ordinance Chapter 98, Zoning, Section 87, 9872, Old Town of Lotus, 
Bar Pete's Place, Spirits, and more. Located at 14743 Bandera Road, Lotus, Texas, 78023. More particularly described as BCAD, private ID number 1154308. Be approved. Is there a second? I'll second. There discussion on the item, Joe. I uh, uh, make this motion based solely on the fact that it appears to be totally in agreement with the code and the rules that we have established. Ron, anyone else? Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to voice that I personally, I just think that it's what within 15, 20 feet of the other sign there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was just browsing here, and, and I don't see a, a a limit on quantity. Um, you know, as, as far as one off-premise sign is permitted for business or not, um, that so there doesn't seem to be any stipulation on that. But I just feel that um, it's too close to the other sign and. It's making, um, setting precedence for other businesses in the future that we're going to have a, that whole yard's going to be filled with signs. Anyone else? Can I, Jason, ask, a, can I ask a question? Um, the, there is like a multi-tenant sign facing Old Bandera Road, which was previously approved. And was that, was that approved as a, a creative sign for the downtown district, or was that approved as a multi-tenant, you know, sort of under the multi-tenant umbrella of codes? You're talking about the sign for Old Town Holotus? No, the sign for, because there's a sign right near where they're proposing to put this, which I believe is like a multi-tenant. I don't know if we can see it in this it's, photo, but it's the one there's a multi-tenant sign, right. but it's she had right a, there, yeah. which was previously approved. I don't think any of us up here recall the process by which that particular one was. It wasn't too long ago. I, is for as large as it was, because I, I think it was corrected as part of a wall, I think it would have had to have been created a sign. I think the, the larger issue here that people have expressed, regardless of what the outcome of this particular vote is, is that I think it would be helpful for staff to visit with the developer about the larger issue here, about the concern about potential proliferation of, of signs, um, given that there are multiple businesses that will emerge back off the street to, to manage the process. And I think the developers should, should take ownership of that, given that that's how they've decided to construct the business, the businesses. I would agree if the, uh, if the uh, commission wants to take that approach, I would agree to but Maybe. it's apart from the motion that's out there right now. I understand. Sure. I understand. I would agree to lay the motion aside. Well, I don't think we need to change the motion at this okay. point. I mean, okay. It's just a direction for staff. The motion is to approve the request by Pete Pompa for a wayfinding sign to be located in the municipal right of way pursuant to 9872 G6B3, which is the zoning. Old Town, Halotus, and Special District Off-Premises Signs section for Pete's Place, Spirits, and more at 14743 Bandera Road. All in favor of the motion signal aye. Aye. All opposed? Oh. Aye. Nay. Three nays. Four nays. Four nays, I'm sorry. One in favor, four opposed. This motion fails. So we will communicate that back to the applicant and go from there. We'll go to item six tonight, which is discussion and action on a request by Brenda Beams for approval of wall signage pursuant to chapter 66, section 51. That's signs, commercial signs, projecting wall and hanging or in or on windows for full service auto parts at one four, excuse me, one zero four seven five Doheny. And is there someone representing that business tonight? 
Okay, if we have questions. No, if we have questions for you. <laughs> uh, and we have the staff recommendation here that is with us. So I'd open the floor if there are comments, questions, discussion. And actually, I would like to just start. Um, uh, Susan, can you verify this is in the EPJ? This, this uh, is not in the city limits. Okay, double checking that. And you all should have the images were in here somewhere at the back. No questions. A motion would be appropriate. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion. To yes, go ahead, Jeff. Make a motion to approve a request by Brenda Beams for approval of wall signs pursuant to the proposed zoning increase chapter 66 signs, section 6651 commercial signs, projecting wall and hanging or in or on windows for a full service auto park located at 10475 Doheny, Alotus, Texas. Is there a second? I'll second. Jason, so discussion at all, Jeff or Jason? No. Anyone else? The motion is to approve the request by Brenda, Brenda Beams for wall signage pursuant to 6651. Uh, chapter 66, section 51, signs, commercial signs, projecting wall and hanging or in or on windows for full service auto parts at 10474, 10475 Doheny. Uh, all in favor of this motion, please signal aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Motion's approved. Thank you. Thanks for stopping in. Item seven tonight is discussion and action on a request by Deborah Keepers for approval of a variance to Municipal Code of Ordinances Chapter 66 signs for Helotus Gentle Family Dentistry located at 15876 Bandera Road. We have the staff information here, Mr. Ballard, I did find this. So um, if we have comments or questions, that would be, and I'm sure there might be a couple. So uh, I'd open the floor to questions. You should have found a letter from the applicant uh, explaining the purpose of the variance request, uh, as well as the images that are included here. So I open the floor up if there are questions. And I, I will start, Mr. Ballard, if you don't mind, just coming up and, and put on the record for us your name and, and address, business address. Um, can you tell us anything about the duration of time that that sign has been in place? It's been in place about seven years. There was uh, originally a contractor when she first moved into the place that, that uh, built the sign, erected it, and uh, Debbie thought that they'd actually got a permit and had permitted to sign. Uh, code enforcement let us know a couple of weeks ago that it was not permitted. So that's why, you know, that's what's generated, you know, this getting action now. Put your name uh, and address on uh, the record for us. Bradley Ballard, and work address is 15876 Bandera Road, Helotus, Texas. Uh, home address is 382. Okay. That's good. Uh, and so the, the code enforcement informed you all that the sign was in violation because of the type of sign that it was, a pole sign. Correct. Okay. Um, well, and just that it wasn't permit permitted at all. It wasn't permitted at all, He said there was right. no record, record of it. And, okay. Uh, so there's been a... A lot of scrambling the last couple of weeks looking through documents and paperwork to, to find that because she, she thought it was. So so as of now, it's in, in it's not permitted in complete violation. Uh, it was never, and I guess let me preclude this by, uh, if y'all should have a, a copy of this. I don't believe when, we, is that an the Google The Google Earth picture. The, the property's on four acres. 
and she built on one side, it's actually platted in half to where it's two acres lengthwise uh, on, on the property. There's a corner acre or a corner two acres that she was reserved to the side for future development. That hasn't happened yet. Um, we've recently been in contact with other dentists, some specialists, and with the bank, to, you know, physically actively looking to uh, improve that property now, uh, either sell it or, or improve it ourselves. Uh, and we, re we realize it needs to have a monument sign there on that corner. That is what would be expected. Right now, we don't know if we would need a single or a, a multi-purpose monument. We, we asked, you know, figure that there probably need, eventually need to be a multi-purpose just because, you know, there probably be multi-tenants on there. We don't really didn't want to spend the money to erect anything yet. So we, you know, have a temporary, as you can see, very temporary banner glued and screwed to a piece of plywood. Um, I, I guess I'm here, you know, seeking to, to leave it there for a while. I put 24 months, but uh, however long we can leave it or open for suggestions on what the committee think I, we should do. And Dr. Keeper is, at the moment, is not anticipating relocating her practice no, from that location. No. Uh, this is and, and it is set back, if you're familiar with the property, it's very heavily wooded in the front. Uh, and there is a, you can see the line where the culvert goes under Highway 16. There's mm -hmm. a, a drainage ditch that yep. goes through that fr front corner of the property. So she's had to build the, her building to the back a, a little bit. So there's, there's not the ability, and it's heavily wooded, so she can't put a, a sign on the building. So the only other option is My handiwork, <laughs> but uh, so it's so we're just uh, I guess if we need to take it down, we can. I'm just looking for suggestion on what we sure. should do. Let me open or, up the questions or comments. What is the entrance to the um, to her practice? Is it and off of Whippoorwill or is it's it off, off Whippoorwill? And that's one of the it issues. You see, there's a, a, a pretty good sized drainage ditch to uh, to build across it. And she did have when she first moved in, she had the. Uh, uh, text dot got a, she got a permit to where she could uh, build a, a, a culvert and bridge across to there. There are it is pretty heavily drained in that area because you got the Whipple Road drainage road that comes down, and then um, you know it is just the, the of course it's hard to explain it, but coming down from where the old propane place was and going that direction. So there's quite a bit of water, so it had to be a pretty big bridge going across there and. Uh, Starting out, Dennis building a building. She didn't have the funds to, you know, spend a few hundred thousand dollars for a bridge. And so, the, the the sign is located so, on the property, right? Yes, it's sir. It's not the right of way. It, it's in, it's all fenced. The whole property's fenced. And you see, the entrance is off Whippoorwill. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I have a small banner there, which I'm gonna I found out now. I need to uh, get some type of a uh, direction indicating entrance marker, uh, which I'll figure that one out later. Um, so that, that one will come down. I'm just concerned about leaving the one up front until we can figure out what we want to do. Other comments or questions? Yes. How long can he have a banner? What, what is the banner rules? I, I think it's 30 days. Banner is, is temporary. It's very short. Yeah. I think the broader issue here on this one it, is that the pole sign is prohibited. Right. Uh, uh, not being an old town. He can get a new, he can get a replacement banner, can he? You got you can get a replacement banner, right? When it's 30 days up, you can ask for another one and get another one, right? Uh, there's a renewal period, I believe. Yeah, I don't know. 30 right. days per quarter? Yeah. Uh, that doesn't make much sense in this case. Mm -hmm. Do we know, and Susan, I, I, I understand you may not know the answer to this, but do we know why city enforcement seven years later was <laughs> looking into this? I'm sorry, I can't speak to that. Yeah. <laughs> that sign has actually been as is like it is for seven no, years? As is now for about a year. Hmm. It was the same exact spot, same location. It was just, it was only, now it's four feet by six feet. It was three feet by four feet before. I just made it a little bit bigger. We had to add a, an associate dentist. Uh, and the sign bef 
before was just, I mean, it's the same spot, the same, same poles. It was just a different, uh, uh, it was, it was plywood with a yeah. paint, you know, name painted on it it's, and phone number painted on it. So. Yeah, as a, as a recommendation item to city council, uh, we can make a proposal of what to do. In fact, we will be making a proposal of what to do. Uh, as we consider this, uh, knowing that both the council will have to approve it, uh, but we can suggest something uh, other than take it down and leave it up. We can we can time limit it. We can time limit it similar to what they've done or not done, or we could say it's a pole sign. It's been up long enough. Uh, I'd be curious as to what the sentiment is up here. Uh, and, and that's mainly what we're looking for is just yeah. just some time and probably recommendations on. I don't know what to put up. So. Well, could we just recommend that he put some monument sign up, but give him a time, some time to do it? Is that an option? Yeah, I mean, it seems like that if uh, Dr. Keepers is staying put, the question is the facing of the monument sign, that there'll be some type of permanent sign in place. There will need to be a permanent sign in place, and the, the facing of it will depend on what happens to the property if they're future tenants. Mr. Chairman, I completely agree with that sentiment, although in the past, probably within a year, we've probably had two or three exact same type of these signs pop up, and we, we just told them to put some plywood at the bottom, paint it black, enclose it, and put some uh, landscaping around it good um, those have pretty much been two poles you know either back to back or right. front side only not in this triangular air uh, form well I think I think some of the previous recommendations were to fill it in I think masonry was one uh, land adding a landscaping that is generally required for these type of signs was another recommendation we've given to similar cases in the past um, I guess I'm somewhat sympathetic to a temporary, I guess just how would that be exercised sort of question I would have is it, you know, how does that stay on the radar of enforcement? I mean, if this lot stands undeveloped for seven more years, you know, we're gonna be, you know, have this thing a non-conforming sign for seven years or, you know, indefinitely, unless there's some means of enforcement to that. thoughts? Well, now it says 24 months, which are two years rather than seven. I think we could take some kind of action in regards to the request for two years. Uh, meaning what? Meaning that we could do something temporary saying, okay, you can keep this sign for two years and that two years you have to replace it. Which is what the applicant is. is That's what the applicant is. Yes. John, it's a little long, maybe less time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. If you think about this as this has been in place or a sign of similar design and construction has been there for quite a while, several years. Uh, and so I don't exempt the city from some responsibility here in allowing it to, to go forward. So I'd, I'd like to see it corrected and I think the sentiment would, would be very strong in favor of seeing a nice permanent sign which is clearly in the, the planning I think that the applicant has. Uh, and I don't mind a, a, a a grace period of some time period to recommend the council in light of the fact that this sign has been there for many years. We're not talking about just, you know, filling it in to make it look like a monument sign. We're talking about an, an actual appropriate monument sign to replace it and give them a little bit more time to accomplish that rather than, uh, I'm sure this came out of the blue um, uh, to them. 
this an actual approval? Or is this a is a recommendation item. So if there's sentiment to, you know, time limit this as a as a means to sort of bring it to resolution. <coughs> And not seven years or even two years later. I think that might be the way to propose it to, right. to the applicant and the um, Yeah, again, you know, my sentiment what? is that we've already kind of set a precedent. So where we say throw on some black plywood at the bottom and close it, add some landscaping. By the time, <clears throat> we could put a time limit on it, but we haven't put time limits on the other signs like that. No. And by the time that they do develop this, they'll have to come back to change the sign. Right. So at that point in time, I mean, if we bring it into code now by what we've been doing in the past, setting precedence with, um, you know, like you said, if they develop the property and add more people, they'll want to change the sign. Would you all like to proceed? Well, I'm always inclined to uh, try to provide the customer what they ask for if we can do it within the rules and what we've done in the past. So that's my feeling about it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion. Put something out there. We can okay. We're getting um, good at shooting them down these days. So. <coughs> yeah. Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll make a motion to um, recommend approval on a request by Deborah Keepers for approval of variance to municipal. Ooh, just to take that back. So they're ask, actually asking for a variance. Say, say that again. So they're a, actually asking Correct. for a variance. Correct. So they won't have to take it right down. Could be part of the variance. I don't think it changes anything to what you do for the motion. I mean, you okay? no, I mean, okay. if you're going to put conditions on you, yeah. the commission okay. will, will uh, either agree or disagree. Um, make motion to approve the request by Deborah Keepers for approval of variance to municipal code of ordinances, chapter 66 six signs for Hilarious General Family Dentistry located at 15876 Mandera Road, provided that they enclose the base to all the way to the bottom, add landscaping around the bottom and add the address to the property somewhere on the sign. <clears throat> and you're not putting a time limit on that, that's the full solution, okay. And uh, I, I don't believe you said this, but I, I, it's a recommendation item, so we're, this right. is the recommendation. Yeah, recommend. Is there a second for that motion? I'll second that. Ron seconds that, okay. So discussion on this motion you know, again, Mr. Chairman, uh, you know, granted, we'd like to see something a little bit better, um, but I think we've set precedents here in the past year or so with <clears throat> these type of signs. It, technically, um, you know, here it says pole sign. What, what number is this? Number seven. It says um, Pole sign means a freestanding sign, usually double double faced, mounted on a round pole, square tube, or other fabricated member, without any type of secondary support. So, by reading that definition, to me, this isn't a pole sign. It's an unopened area monument sign, to me. Therefore, I, my recommendation okay. is to close in the bottom, add some landscaping around the bottom, add the address, make the monument sign. Okay, the staff did, in their investigation, did determine for code purposes it was a pole sign, so, but your point taken that it's a different look, certainly, than what you've seen in other similar signs. Uh, who seconded that? You, you, any discussion? I'm good. <laughs> Anyone else <laughs> have a discussion on the item? OK, 
Okay, so the uh, motion, I'll read it back, is to recommend approval of a request by Deborah Keepers uh, for a variance to Municipal Code of Ordinances, Chapter 66 for Helotus Gentle Family Dentistry, located at 15876 Bandera Road on the condition that the base be fully enclosed, that landscaping be added to the sign, and that the address be included on the sign. So all in favor of that motion signal aye. 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 Opposed? Mm, unanimous approval on that motion. So that will go to city council on uh, the 12th, I believe, of October. So they'll have the final say on it. And just uh, one thing, Mr. Ballard, to communicate back uh, to Dr. Keepers that uh, were this recommendation to be approved by council and she decide that actually what is being asked for is not what she likes, this would need to come down and be replaced with a sign that does fully conform. And certainly if in a year or two when there's a new tenant, let's say, on the property, then it would be acceptable to pull it down and put up the type of sign you were describing before. Okay, so October 12th, it'll be on city council's agenda. We're gonna move to item eight tonight. Item eight tonight is discussion and action on a request by CSDRE LLC for approval of a menu board sign pursuant to Municipal Code of Ordinances, Chapter 66, Section 52, Miscellaneous Signs, Subparagraph B, Menu Boards for Slim Chicken's Restaurant at 12530 Bandera Road. Anyone representing them tonight? Nope. So you received uh, information from city staff on this, and uh, we can open this up to question. I'd like to just ask one, is there not Susan, a menu board in place there currently? There is a menu board. Okay. It's been there the whole time. They never, so they, they never brought it back to get approved. All right. And I guess it's, uh, I would just ask, uh, if you look at the property right now, there's at least two, if not three banners on the property that uh, need to be considered by, by staff mm -hmm. in terms of the time frame on that. Uh, you have a, a sketch of the menu board. You actually have an image of it as well. Uh, that is in place. And we do consider that, am I correct, Susan, one sign? Yes. Multi-paneled or, or multi-faced sign. So questions or comments, or if not, a um, motion would be appropriate. Mr. Chairman, does it state anywhere the uh, total overall square footage? Of the, of the sign? Uh, the actual sign that's uh, there right now? There's a dimensional drawing. Uh, uh, yeah. It's 121 by 70, which amounts to almost 60 on the square feet. to approve the request by CSDRE LLC for approval of menu board sign pursuant to Municipal Code of Ordinances, Chapter 66 Signs, Section 6652, uh, pursuing Chicken's Restaurant located at 12530 Bandera Road. I'll oh, second. Discussion of the item. Jeff, Richard, anyone else? The motion is to approve the request by CSDRELLC for the menu board sign 
pursuant to chapter 66, section 52, subparagraph B, that is signs, miscellaneous signs, menu boards for Slim Chicken's Restaurant at 12530 Bandera Road. All in favor, please signal aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is approved. Item nine tonight is discussion and action on a request by Mary Williams for approval of monument and wall signage pursuant to chapter 66, section 49, commercial signs, single business use monument type and 6651B wall signs for prestige emergency room at 11590 Gall Road. It's gotta be you guys, right? Okay. <laughs> Finally. If we have questions and we might, we'll ask you to come up. Did you wish to speak to this at all, Susan? Go yes. ahead. And maybe you can get the, uh, back to the pages on it, so. Thank you. Um, after reviewing section 66.51 of the commercial signs, um, projecting wall hanging or in windows, um, submitted plans proposed two wall signs on the front facade, um, those wall signs total to 164 square feet. Um, code allows for a maximum of 100 square feet. There is a third sign proposed on the side elevation, which we did find that was compliant with code. There are two wall signs proposed on the front facade. Code prescribes a single sign per side. Going to the monument signs. Two monument signs were proposed in the submitted plans. Both proposed monument signs have a base that has a smaller area than the signage area. Um, that is not compliant with code. Both monument sign bases are proposed in a stucco finish. Um, stone is preferable. We feel that this is also not compliant with code. <coughs> Can you call up the images? Um, do you have them tied in here so we're all looking at them? Don't look at it as I'm scrolling through it so fast. So those are the two wall signs, right? Yes, sir. And then can you just turn ahead to the monument ones? This, this is calculated at 147 square feet. This is calculated at 18. Again, the maximum allowable front, uh, facade square footage is 100. This proposed signage is 50 square feet, which is uh, compliant with code. These are the monument signs. Again, the base is not, is smaller than the signage area, as well as this is proposed stucco. The location, the two signs, right? Two monuments? Yes, sir. Where is, where is the second one? Um, here, here. Uh, all right, well, that leads me to the other question, which is given the, where the development is with the streets that intersect, how many streets are we considering, does the staff consider this to be bordering? I believe two. Two? Okay. Right. So let me ask you if one of you would mind coming up and uh, to answer a couple questions. <laughs> okay. Whoever wants to talk. Put your, your name and business address on record for us. Mary Williams with Pinnacle Sign Team Inc. And um, it's uh, 401 Isom Road, San Antonio, Texas. Okay. So you heard the concerns about yes. these, a few of these things. So I think on the monument signs, changing the material and widening the base seems to be the most straightforward approach to those. Um, 
the way the code reads is that they're saying an 18 inch minimum base. That's what I understood it to be. That's 18 inches. And then the sign itself, uh, the code says 80 square feet total. So if you measure that, it's exactly 80 square feet total. Now, as far as the base goes, if, I mean, there's, I, I don't believe there's any stone on the building, but if we need to throw stone in there, I guess the doctors will throw some stone in. That's not a big deal, you know. We were matching the colors of the building and the finish. Mm -hmm. uh, in, term, in staff's interpretation of the code, you, maybe we can point the applicant to the relevant language regarding base and sign relation. If you happen to have it handy, you can So you want the base to extend exactly to the edges of the sign? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Is the landscaping included? It's not a big deal. It's just, it's just design. Oh. And easier for people to see around as well, but no, is the landscaping included? Is landscaping included? included in is there landscaping included? There's landscaping in place, and it was with the original development approved. There's a plan in place. Uh, Ron, oh, that was I'm just that's okay. okay. Um, now, yes, Mr. please. Chairman, I have a question. It looks like there's going to be two of those monument signs. That one there is that that one's going to be on the entrance off of. Gaum Road, Gaum and then Road. the smaller one is going to be off of the right. It's more of a directional, of yes. FM, FM 1560. 1560 correct. And both of them will have addresses on them. Yes, they will. Internal lighting. Yes, sir. For state code for emergency facilities. Are they taking up the whole space? They're taking that whole, Building. and plan right. one, yeah, plan on this first page, they're taking that whole highlighted area. So if it was separated into individual, individual tenants, you'd have eight signs there. Right. They're taking the whole building. Right. So if this is, um, maybe staff, was staff's interpretation that this was only bordering one street? in terms of the number of wall signs, because if it's two streets, then it would be permittable to have two signs, without a variance, that is. Yeah, we considered it as one street. It's one. Now, I, can I ask okay. a question? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> if we look at the signs on the front, um, These right here. Yes. How did how did you calculate that to be over a hundred square feet? I mean, we looked at the signs on the side, and individually the the raceways are counted. On the front, you added it all together. So from the top of Prestige to the bottom of Emergency, you took a big rectangle, and and you know that's their space. So if you do it that way, yes, it's over a hundred feet. If you measure from the logo to prestige and down and around in a rectangle, and then emergency in, a, in its own re rectangle, you're at 100 feet, 100 square feet, which is in compliance and um, right. proportionate for the building. I mean, it could even be bigger. So staff calculated it out as larger, right? Yes, as in, one the, in the where? drawing. Go ahead. I don't know that I can make this bigger. <clears throat> in the submitted plans, the dimensions given, um, this is, you might be able to read it on your hard copies, um, looking at the prestige emergency room sign, there is square footage noted of 120 square feet, 18 square feet, and seven square feet. Our interpretation was that was the area calculated for those particular parts of the sign. And I was informed that you all have the right to approve 25% overage um, if it's reasonable. Right. So the issue here is as presented, it's more than 25 over. 25%. So if we went 25% over, 125, right? Yeah. 
so we would <laughs> have to you. sacrifice <laughs> the 24-7. If I mean, I think that's kind of important for people. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Why we'd have to sacrifice maybe the 24-7 the on the, the far right side. I mean, they need to have their name and they need to have emergency room as big as possible. I don't think that's... I, well, do you think, um, I mean, there's different ways to approach it. You know, 24-7 is emblazoned on the monument sign. Yeah, true. Um, I'm wondering if that could be smaller. It'd be, I agree, it'd be, it'd be smaller for sure. It may not be the, the desired look that you wish, but I think, I think the, the larger emergency room on the front, mm -hmm. coupled with two monument signs, both lit, both 24-7, Somebody's pulling in there at three in the morning. They know you're going to be open. Mm -hmm. I don't think there'll be any doubt about that. So I don't. I don't know that that is as uh, beneficial a sign mm -hmm. as having it on the monument and having the monuments at each entrance. Let me uh, pause for a second. I've been talking a lot. Are there questions up here based on? Mr. Chairman. Yes. Go ahead. So. Just a recap here. The name in the emergency room on the front, if we bring that down to 125, it would be in compliance? It would, but it would then sacrifice the 24-7 on the, on the wall. On the, on the uh, face. On the face. Now, if the applicant wished to preserve the 24-7 in addition to the emergency room, would, the applicant would have to put in a variance for that. Mm -hmm. Which is something you can do. I don't know if it's. I mean, that's that's your decision. Um, I think from our perspective, both from the city trying to ensure a certain standard, but also from what we've seen in the past for other businesses. I, I, as I said, I don't know that a twenty-four-seven adds. There's a lot of value added to it compared mm -hmm. to where it appears elsewhere. Mr. Chairman, Richard, couldn't they put that in the, <coughs> in the window? <coughs> well, this covers wall. I mean. Uh, um, the, it's 66.51 commercial signs projecting walls and hangings it's all part of the or same in or on windows okay. come on up if you wanted to speak to just put your name and business address on please like I said I leased this and my father and I and another partner built it so I know all the measurements just by heart after years uh, my name's James Kevin Spruill uh, I office at 7300 Blanco Road, Suite 603, San Antonio, 78216. Okay. Um, everybody knows where this building is. Okay, you've got the Domino's that runs all down, all the way down to Alamo Springs. Now, Domino's has a sign that faces out to Gaum Road. It has the one that faces to 1560. This building is perpendicular at the other end. It faces to 1560, and the side wall faces to the Walmart across the street. That all those spaces are 60 feet deep, and then across the front there are 60 of them that are 20 feet, so 120 by 60. So I don't know if everybody kind of knew the numbers. It sounded like we were saying it only faced one road when it really faces two, just like the Domino's does on the other. And then Old Gallum Road runs behind the property. Right. So I'm kind of going, okay, there's three roads there, and we were saying there was one that it faced. So I was just trying to clarify. I don't know the signage rules. You know, I told them so it, we, we, it, it's got to work for the state of Texas, what they require for the ER and what works for Holotus. So, and I appreciate that. And I think, I think people are comfortable with that. I think we, I think the larger issue we're trying, would be good to resolve is the size issue. Because that we are, we are limited. Staff has calculated it and that's what we need to go by. If there's a dispute there, then maybe we pull it for now and you guys work it out. But using their numbers, it's more the size than the number that's really problematic is that you put one big sign and one small sign together is here and you're, you're well over. Now you can request a variance or you could simply take 25% more than allowable, which would put it at 125. I think the commission would be uh, open to the possibility of those two signs totaling 125 or having one sign, one wall sign totaling 125. What we wanna to try to do is keep it though with it to 125. Um, I think the monument issue is resolvable, widening the bases. We've talked about a little stucco. That's that's straightforward enough. Uh, but from our perspective, to ensure that we're complying with our own code, we really want to keep it to 125 unless you wish, you know, to pursue a variance, which is a different, you know, different Hold process. Thing. 
Well, like I said, I was hearing facing one street, and I was like, no, it's just like the dominoes. It faces the two, and it's on the corner thing. And I thought, okay, does that make the difference for the part that faces the Walmart? You know, well, you got the, the Walmart facing one's good. Oh, whatever they okay, but yeah. the Walmart right. right. the dominoes There's faces no issue, one no and a half spaces. And so it's almost spread yeah. the other. Over here, the Jeff. Or 20, those are 30. Punching lines, numbers so. in here, and I can't quite read on the very top of it. Is that here. Where? 31 feet, 10 inches? Well, I, I don't know. The Those very top number there across the well, three. Prestige is. No, the prestige oh. is 12 feet. Yeah, the 31, overall. 31, end to end. 10 inches, yes. <clears throat> 31.10. If that's 31 feet, 10 inches, and it's 2, two feet, six inches high, that emergency room is only 82.76 square feet, not what it states in the rent. I think they meant the 82, eight, call it 83, plus the 18 square feet, 101. But it looks like seven. it's taller. It looks like just the letters are 26, that the sign, the, the black is. That, no, that. that's a night look. That's not part of the sign. That's the oh, night okay. look. Just the letter and height. Yeah. So I think he was going, I think that's my designer's mistake. If that's 80 feet and then the other one is 18, we were right in line on that first one. And then 24 7 would have to be reduced to 25 square feet if they wanted that or put it in the window later on. But I think the doctors would be open to working the signs for 125 feet. It's, it's not that much off. Thank you for I mean, catching I would, that. I would defer to staff on this, and you know they will, and they will work with you as the applicant in terms of ensuring that the calculations are, mm -hmm. are accurate and so forth. I think you do come back though, to if it's 125, for that front wall, this, this commission does need to decide the number of signs to be permitted. So right now. We're looking at the proposal has three, correct? That's correct. Three plus the two plus the, uh, the uh, yeah. two monuments. Yes. Mr. Chairman, are yes. you calling the front-facing emergency room? Are you calling that two signs? No. The twenty-four-seven makes sign two. Right. That's I mean. Yeah. Okay. So. And there's the other, the other smaller one, which is good. Which is okay. We're not even talking about that one. That one's straightforward, right there. Well, Mr. Chairman, would they need a variance to? I, I'm, I'm somewhat in agreement with them that if you if they weren't taking up the whole space and they weren't renting it out to six different places, then you'd have six different signs up there. Mm -hmm. You said two. Um, granted, the one wouldn't be that big, but um, two versus six. I agree. And, and we can make we can make that motion. Yeah. Can can we have a variance for number of signs on the side on one yes. space? Uh, though that would turn it into a recommendation because council would have to act on that that portion of it. In other words, we could go to 125, for example, on size. Mm -hmm. That would also be a recommendation, though, correct? No, that would be an approval because we're within our authority to exceed by 25 percent. It's 25 percent, right? right? But if we wish to approve the number of signs that are here. Uh, I'm sorry, let me be clear. The number of sign, wall signs okay. that are here, not the monuments, that council would have to approve the number. And we certainly could put that through if that's the sense, sentiment of the commission. Uh, in my personal view, and this is, I'm only speaking for myself here, of the five signs, uh, 
we've already got three 24 sevens. <laughs> so uh, again, I see that other one is, is really not adding that a lot. Granted, it's, you know, if you had six businesses, you'd have six signs, but I don't know that it's, it's a useful, as beneficial in my personal view. Further discussion, comments, questions? Jason, you about to say something? Mm, no? I'm just thinking. <laughs> Would someone be up to make an emotion to hear? People know what they want. What's the matter here? I think we're good. I think we're good. Until we're not. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> I let you know in 30 seconds. But. Uh, just to recap on the issues before there's a motion, uh, we've talked about monument signage uh, extending the base to be at least as wide as the sign, and that the base be a stone rather than stucco. We've talked about permitting 125 square feet on the wall, front wall signage. And the only, I think, unresolvable thing right now is the number, the total number of wall signs. If it is more than two, then it would go to council as a recommendation. Chairman, I'll make a motion. Okay, go ahead. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the request by Mary Williams for approval of monument wall signage pursuant to Municipal Code of Orange's Chapter 66 signs, Section 66-49 commercial signs, single business use monument type, and 66-51B wall signs for prestige emergency room located at 11590 Gome Road, <coughs> provided that the two monument signs, the base be extended to the edges and be of stone material and have landscaping around them and that the front only have the one in the middle, no more than a maximum of 125 square feet and the um, sign on the side elevation is fine. Is there a second? I'll second that. Did you stipulate on the front wall sign, you said one? One. Of 125 square feet, okay. More than 125. And I presume you're referencing the emergency room sign, right? Right. Is, all right, so discussion, Disc any discussion on this? No, I, I, same thing, you know, they had Granted, you could have six signs up there, but I do feel that 24-7 is a little redundant and therefore uh, not necessarily needed at that location. Um, could you recap that? Say that? Could you recap that motion? Um, I, I will in a moment, if that's all right. Yeah. Let me just get their comments. Um, okay, any discussion? Covered it. Discussion. I think, and I have a question here for Susan. The staff measured the prestige emergency room as what size? Is it 100? 146 square feet. Okay. And so applicant and staff will have to verify those numbers together, but 125 is the number. Um, the motion, uh, here's the recap, Joe. The motion is, sorry, just a moment here. The motion is to approve the request by Mary Williams for approval of monument and wall signage pursuant to Municipal Code of Ordinances Chapter 66 signs, Section 49 commercial signs, single, single business use monument type, and 6651B wall signs for prestige emergency room at 11590 Galm Road uh, with the conditions that on the monument signs that the base be extended uh, to the edge of the sign face, that the base be constructed of stone, not stucco, and that there be landscaping around both monument signs. On the wall signage, that the one side elevation be approved as submitted, 
and that on the front wall signage that there be one sign up to 125 square feet. All in favor of that motion signal aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Okay, thank you all for being here. Good luck to you. All right, we can, uh, we have another item on our agenda. Um, Susan, did you get any direction or comments from Rick regarding the final item on the agenda, which is this? Um, my understanding, this is a working document. The comments that you see on this version include that of council and mayor Schoolcraft. Okay. Could we study that and come back to it? We can. I would like to, um, I'd like to point out a few things. Um, if we could just take a look at it together. Um, as you flip through it, you'll see that there's uh, commentary on the margin from mo mainly the mayor. And so much of it, I would say, or, or a fair part, fair amount of it is um, cleaning up the language, uh, striving for consistency. But there are a few substantive matters. Um, and one of which, and I, I'm not really, I'm not highlighting these in order of significance or anything of the sort, but if you are on the very first page, which is actually numbered page two, 66.3 scope. Everybody see that? Uh, the mayor had uh, comment, I believe it's the mayor who commented this, that uh, regarding signs visible to the public or not, and whether we uh, should articulate and explicit, we are regulating signs visible to the public here. And, and there are other places in this rewrite where he suggested uh, either modifying or removing that language, as I understand it. I actually would argue that we would probably be better served by leaving it in, because visible to the public um, can change over time. Signs that are visible now may not be visible in the future or vice versa if you think about the road, um, the rerouting of the road here. And so I think we are better served by allowing this to cover all signs, my personal view, and I wanted to point that out to people as they look through this. Uh, other places, other issues that have jumped out at me as I've read through this. And I'd actually ask either for uh, Susan or, or Alex representing council on this one. This is the top of page four in the document. It is in a section regarding design review guidelines. And it, uh, number one on the top of page four reads, the design of materials comprising logos shall be consistent with the guidelines in this section. To my knowledge, we don't articulate guidelines anywhere in this section as the mayor has, has called attention to. Yet we do have a section in our code regarding architectural review. Uh, and Old Town has its own section as well. Do, it, would it behoove us to actually stipulate that in here as a way of adding some clarity? I, mean, I, I believe that's what the mayor is going towards, is I, what are the guidelines? Yeah. How is somebody supposed to know? I, I believe that was his train of thought when he highlighted that, just to be The idea is that a resident should be able to read these documents and clearly understand what they're communicating. And I think his goal with his comments is just that, is clarity. I think, and I think that's laudable, and we haven't done a revision like this for a while. Um, as we continue to learn, uh, we can't anticipate everything. Uh, now, if you go down that page, another one that and I don't know what the thinking was here under exempted signs, number five, works of art, works of fine art, which brought to mind the entry sign um, uh, issue that we've had of late. Uh, and I don't believe, I didn't look, if our, does our glossary have, or definition have fine art in it? Does anybody know? I have it here. So. I mean, and it raises the issue of what are we considering entry signs that are detached from the actual signs and are more like uh, entry displays. <laughs> it says uh, fine art means sculpture, fountain, or similar object. Okay. Susan, go ahead. Same point. So are we, are we, do we want this to appear? Do we actually want to say that it's an exempted sign, that it's not, if we take it out here, how do we regulate it? Is there somewhere else that it's, 
we would we would uh, touch this. I don't, I'm not being especially clear, um, but if we if we want to have the ability to regulate a detached, non-signed structure, if we don't put it here, what do we do? Yeah. I'm looking for solutions to this. I don't know. Maybe there is a separate code written for monuments or follies. Um, to throw an architect word, um, you know there are, you know, uh, non-usable structures, you know, put up for various reasons. We, uh, but whether or not it's attached to the sign, I think, is an, another issue. Is it, you know, is it if somebody puts up a tower, you know, and has on one side of the driveway of an, uh, you know, say a shopping center or a. a um, uh, a residential subdivision, you know, and then puts their logo on the other, you know, which one is the sign? Are they both the sign? Are they both, you know, what purpose are they serving? And I don't know that it's wrong to have it both um, or have them combined or, or whatever, but it's something to think about. Right. I mean, in theory, somebody could build the tower and then not, you know, kind of skirt, you know, simply be approved by building permit for a foundation and then you know the sign would be approved by us but we'd have no knowledge of the other right the other item yeah I, I would tend to agree with you commissioner that even having this in here that somebody could come back and say well this is fine art it, therefore it's exempt well is that <laughs> how it's been resolved I don't know if you were here Susan but in the past where we've had this Alex with entry signs and structures attached to them that have been permitted. Were we advised as a city that because we didn't speak to that in the code that there really wasn't an avenue to address or regulate? then you come back to Jason's point that you need to have a separate new section of the code devoted to and, it, it, and that might that might be something I mean I don't know that that would have to be terribly complicated I mean we could stipulate you know a length width and a height limit on such things and I, I don't to me I express my own opinion I don't have a problem with having a larger object as an entrance piece to a shopping center or a, um, a, a subdivision I, I think there should be limits on it um, but, and I think that, to me, my personal opinion, one of the ones that came before us, my biggest problem was that they tried to put the sign all the way at the top of this thing, and, and now it's definitely not. <coughs> now it's definitely a sign. You know, it's you build a tower and then you put a sign on top of it. That is a sign. That's not a monument. You know, and that that they were already violating the height limit, and you know that that to me that's the end of the end of the discussion. So in that case, yeah. the city Right. Now you have a 20-foot tower, 20-foot tower that could be an emergency. Right. Other than presumably they need engineering to prove it's not going to fall down and kill somebody. But uh, yeah. But yeah, I think I think I would like to see a height limit on that. I mean, if we are going to, you know, kind of look at that, I definitely a height I think would be critical to my my opinion. So this says it's not a sign.
Well, I think, you know, temporary, though, is another operative term here. As you're talking about putting banners up inside, I mean, I, my own personal view, but yeah, it's okay. You know, 30 days inside the property, you can't really see it. Uh, you know, I think my personal viewpoint is that administrative staff should be able to just sign off on that and, and God bless. But, you know, again, if they're, you know, if they're funding on, uh, you know, the kids coming out of Coons are looking right at it at Corny Val, I mean, that's a different – you know, now it's in the public right away, and you know we're even, I think, fronting on the side with Walmart, where it, you know everybody can kind of see it coming into town. Well, take for example, in a very public place, the in front of Broadway Bank, where the Corny Vols always has temporary sign up. Those are those are permitted, I presume, and they're temporary. They're they're time limited. Mm -hmm. But I think that there's a reasonable argument argument to be made that I would agree with to distinguish that type of sign from what Councilman Blue described, which was internal to Cornival, and it's a ticket sign. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think there's a clear distinction. Yeah. In fact, they're all, but they're also temp those are also temporary. They're also temporary, yeah. that's right. Yeah. But, but, but in public view and out of public view. Right, and, there, and one is in and one is out. Yeah. Uh, if you just flip ahead, and again, like I said, this wasn't in any particular order. On page 13, uh, the suggestion was to remove the public school, public athletic facility section. Am I assuming that is because we actually don't govern that? We don't regulate that any longer? Is that new? Yes, I believe so. That, that directive came from the mayor. So again, I, and for those of you who've been on the commission a while, not too long ago we had, uh, within the past five years, a new sign at... O'Connor that came to us for review and I thought that we had appropriately and reviewed it and it went through the process has something changed within the city state or school district that would prohibit us from reviewing if the school wants to put up a brand new neon sign changeable copy sign so that's why I don't know why what's changed that we would take it out that we wouldn't review it anymore they brought it to the courtesy that they didn't have to I will, I'll contact Mayor Schoolcraft and get clarification on that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's worth inquiring about. On, on that note, I, I would like to bring one of, one of the comments that I had wanted to make tonight was that um, recently there was a Supreme Court case called Reed versus Town of Gilbert. And the staff may want to look at that because that uh, was all about signs all the way up to the Supreme Court and basically said that you can't stipulate the type and size of signs by the use of the, the occupant. But you can't propose a different set of regulations for a church versus a commercial business. And it, it, I, you know, reading through this, it seemed like it, it, it was, you know, pretty tight in that respect, but it seemed like some of them were skirting it or coming close to running afoul of that, and I know we're making changes, so I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention that that it's kind of the, the wall of the land now. Can you clarify that when you say treating a non-commercial than a public facility? Well, different. I think the lawsuit itself, and I'm, you know, again, I'm not an attorney, right. but um, I, 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 the lawsuit, from what I read, was that a town had a different set of standards for churches as they did for other types of properties. Mm -hmm. And the church, in this case, actually had a smaller sign. They were, were not allowed a, as large a sign as some other institutions in the town. And sued because they felt like they should, you know, the school has this big. Why don't? Why aren't we allowed to have this big of a sign? And they won. And so they said, you know, you can limit. You can say, well, if you have a monument sign, it can be this big, and everybody can have that same size monument sign. But you can't say this size monument sign for a church, this size monument sign for a school, this size monument sign for a commercial enterprise. And it's a, a, a free speech issue. We'll research that. Had anybody else uh, looked at it that wanted to call particular issues to our attention? Uh, 
the, the mayor, I believe, and maybe I just don't understand or don't know, the mayor, I believe, have called attention to LED lighting. Um, is there a, and I can't put my finger on any one of them at the moment. Like the first two pages or three pages. What, what page? <coughs> it was like, page five was uh, variable message signs at the bottom. Page three. Or page three. At the bottom. So no LED, so is there? It says LED lighting is permitted, which nowadays pretty much every type of enclosed lighting, yeah. lighting well, is, the, is LED. Well, the mayor's comment suggests that there should be no LED signs. No LED signs, like what they have out front here. Oh, yeah, the, the message, signs, message. the lights. Yeah, yes. message, yeah. The, yeah. the wording needs to be That's changed. That's just the difference says, between lighting. So it's not, there's nothing yeah. wrong with LED lighting. Yeah, yeah page no. five, I think, is what it's a changeable electronic variable messaging. I, item number four on page five. Uh, I don't have item number five. Page five. Under 6631, full signs, roof signs. Okay, there we go. The bottom, sorry. Those, do those reference LED? They don't. Changeable electronic variable message sign. Yeah, which he was. Right. Yeah, I think I think it's a broader. Down. I think it's kind of the broader term that that sign guys are using now because it's you know they're plasma, they're you know, but something that can change. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Richard. On page on page one, that that second paragraph. What what is he referring to that we should be considering? in the future advertising modes. I, well, I think that's a very good question. And I, I mean, think it sounds like the, the, the subject we're talking about. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I mean, in a way it does. So for example, the entry sign yeah. issue is perhaps that. Um, uh, but I, I can't speak for- I can't speak for, for what the mayor's intent was here either. Um, what comes to mind is Vertical signs, the ones that are perpendicular oh. to the ground, I think that is a newer form of signage that's become popular for businesses. So I think that the, the attempt is to be able to address those. Thank you. Yeah, you do see those. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I believe there were some suggested changes in here on the height. I can't find it. If I'm not mistaken on commercial signage to perhaps allow for that. I, I don't recall that precisely. But we have to be careful because you don't just want to expand height. The language would have to be, uh, you know, if you if you offer more height to accommodate a vertical sign, you presumably don't need as much width. And so we'd have to find a way to articulate that. So if that is the look you're going for. Uh, formula for height instead of width. Well, depending. In other words, you don't get maximum. And you'll get both, both yeah. Example. You know, the, the good part about doing this, it's good to refresh this. It's also good to remind yourself that we're not going to solve and anticipate everything. So <laughs> we, we shouldn't feel the pressure to address it all. As you, if you read through this, you saw there's even, there's even discussion in here of, say, uh, handbills, you know, that would go on car windshields whether we want to get down to that level of detail, and I believe that's currently in there, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the point being, there's multiple types of signs, and as we've seen over the past several years, um, you know, applicants come forward with all different creative ideas for us to consider. Uh, and tonight's probably a good example as any. All right, um, why don't we, um, why don't we take as our charge uh, um, reviewing the language in here? Uh, it'd be nice if maybe then the next one, if our the rest of our agenda could accommodate it to be able to just walk through and sort of sign off on some of these. Most of them, not all, but but many of them are non-substantive and hopefully wouldn't require much discussion. Um, we've asked Susan to sort of go back and talk a few issues up just to get clarification, uh, and, and then go from there. A couple other items, just kind of having read through this a little bit this week, I, I think that the definition of pole sign is 
maybe something we could tighten up a little bit. And a couple things come to mind. I mean, obviously, it seems to say one poll, uh, but I think there seems to be some discussion that, you know, two polls or even three polls is still a poll sign. Mm -hmm. um, I might also add that, you know, sometimes you know, there can be some very beautiful old wrought iron single pole signs that, you know, are not, you know, one might call them a pole sign, but it, it's sort of a different animal and, you know, whether or not we stick. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> can we look at that? You know, is that something that we want to look at a little bit? Or is it, you know, if it's one of those old, you know, cedar posts with a couple of poles coming off of it, I mean, is that, you know, is that a pole sign either? Uh, you know, in a certain context, that might be appropriate. Um, uh, you know, the art, right. what is an art piece? Um, there's another one. Uh, it would also, I think, be instructive um, if staff in the next month or, or two, if it takes longer, if if we could look back over, let's just say, the past two years or maybe three years, let's say, at the number of sign variance requests that we've received, I don't recall it being overwhelming, but I could be wrong. You guys nice get a number, though. If we could see, but to see what they are, if we've had 10 variance requests, what have they been for? Okay. Know, you know, that might help guide us a little bit in terms of areas that are repeat mm -hmm. problem areas for applicants. Would you like copies of those as well? I think that, uh, well, um, I hesitate to have that be produced. I think, I, I think it would be sufficient for us to have maybe the, the basics about them, the who, what, where, when, what part of the code uh, might be sufficient. It helps to try to keep that a manageable request. All right. Also, Mr. Chairman, um, staff, if, is uh, the mayor or Rick going to go through the rest of this? Mine, mine seems to stop at page 20. I don't know if it was going to be the it's whole. It's a working document. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Actually, I thought you might have thought the rest of it was good, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I figured, no, no. you know, I just want to make sure. <laughs> and if you would like to add your comments, I'm more than happy to edit this sure. document with your individual comments as well, if it makes it easier for you through the process. Anything else on signs? Ron, you were about to say something. Mr. Chairman, <laughs> yeah. may I make a motion to adjourn? Is there a second? <laughs> I'll second. Please. Please. <laughs> All in favor of night. adjourning, signal aye. 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 Opposed, we stand adjourned at 8.36. <coughs> Please turn off your lights.